Hi, I'm Theo Stocker here for Yachting Monthly and I'm at the Southampton Boat Show on a lovely September day and I've come to have a look at the XS11. Now anybody who's been watching the new boat market recently will have noticed that catamarans are absolutely booming. Uh, that's largely driven by Mediterranean and charter markets, uh, but also increasingly in the UK there's a bit of a new market, particularly among monohull sailors, wanting to go off and have their retirement adventure or have a family adventure. And they're looking for boats that still sail, can still cover the miles, but just have a lot more accommodation space and stability um, that's good for all of the family. Now one of the new brands that's trying to pick up on that trend is XS and I'm going to have a look at the XS11 which is the smallest boat in the fleet. It's only 37 foot, 11 meters long but it offers a huge amount of accommodation and it promises reasonable performance. Um, in theory it can sail upwind at seven or eight knots um, at, I don't know, about 45 degrees to the wind, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and off the wind you'll be up at nine knots, so uh, going along pretty well. And if you're going across the Atlantic, then you're going to spend most of your time off the wind, at least in theory. Uh, and you've got a huge amount of accommodation, equivalent maybe to a 50-foot monohull. You've got four large double cabins. Um, so we're going to have a little look at it now. So the XS11 really aims at, uh, it's not a performance catamaran, but it's also trying to be a little bit quicker and a bit more fun to sail than maybe some of the even larger volume uh, production catamarans. So you've got 37 foot, almost all of that converts to waterline length, um, but you've also got quite a powerful rig, so let's have a look. So you've got a fixed mast twin spreader rig, comes down just ahead of the coach roof. Part of the DNA of this boat is going to be in that bow sprit. It's going to be your code zero or um, asymmetrics for off the wind to really get this boat uh, up to speed. You can see that the uh, anchor on the foredeck's brought aft just in front of the main, as so many cats are. You've got some trampolines there and you've got a couple of nice sun pads on the front. And then, differently to some catamarans, You've got uh, the helms right aft uh, in the uh, just forward of the sterns. You've got no huge superstructure, and you've got a sun roof here, a sort of a target top that can uh, slide aft or come forwards to give you a bit more sunshine in the cockpit um, and a decent amount of shelter. But the helms aft uh, really help because that means that you can have cable steering direct to the quadrant, uh, which offers or promises uh, to be a more engaging sailing experience rather than hydraulic steering um, and you're also on level with the cockpit so that you can talk to people while you're sailing uh, and it's a bit more involved and engaged and that's quite a good summary of what this boat is trying to do. Let's have a look on board. All right, stepping on board on the starboard hull, here we come straight to the helm station and you can see that you're actually standing down on the same level here as the cockpit and then the wheel is mounted in the aft end of the superstructure, of the hull structure. You've got a large chart plotter in front of you, engine throttles there, it's got uh, twin 29 horsepower diesel inboards and your instrument panel there. And then you're looking straight forward, got some people on the foredeck there. And here you are into the cockpit, you've got the other helm over on port side. Sail controls, you've got everything led aft to a single winch here. This is a Harken self-tailing 42 speed and then a bank of clutches just ahead of you. And then you've got furling line for the head sails just on outboard here. So it's a really good direct view. You can see straight up to the mast here, up to the sails. So you've got a really good view forwards. It's a little bit more exposed than you might have on, on some boats. There is an option for a bimini that goes over each of the helm stations. Right, let's have a look in the cockpit. So here you've got a nice big wide cockpit with uh, sliding doors. 
They only open to uh, one door width there, but I think you can slide them both ways. You've got a table that can be removed uh, at sea if you want to. Aft bench here. And all nicely under the shelter of the, uh, the Bimini top. And here's this sliding targa top here. I might see if we can film that opening. Right, let's go inside and have a look around. So you'll notice that this boat is uh, it's a slightly smaller catamaran than uh, you might be used to if you've been on charters before, but they've made really good use of the space. You've got your saloon table here. Steps down to the port accommodation there. You've got a small chart table navigation station here. It hasn't got a chart plot here, but you might opt for that. And then you've got a two burner hob and an oven down there, obviously on a cat. It doesn't need to be gimbaled. You just need uh, good uh, pan holders. And then you've got a really big fridge in here. You know, front opening fridge. Keep your beers all cold. You've got a single sink with a seawater tap, so that's good for heading off cruising. And then you've got a little bit more stowage down in here. It's so reasonable amounts of stowage. You've got under the sink, you've got a pan drawer under the oven, and you've got a bit behind the uh, cooker here, but not loads of space. That's probably enough for a family. And then you've got another locker over here. So that's loads of storage space in there. All right, let's go down here, down into the starboard hull. Now, this boat has an owner's cabin in the starboard hull. So that gives you a really good big, completely square berth here in the stern. You've got this big hull window with an opening hatch as well. Need to make sure that's closed at sea. An opening hatch above the bunk, stowage under the bunk, electrical distribution in this one, a writing desk or a vanity desk, you'd probably have a little stool that goes with that. And then forwards you've got some uh, hanging locker space, shelf stowage, bookcase, hatch there. Don't think that's an opening hatch. Uh, some catamarans have a, an escape hatch there. And the bookshelf, as we discovered, slides closed like that. There you go. With more stowage behind it. See if I can work out how to get out. There we go, that slides. And then coming forwards, you've got this absolutely palatial heads compartment. Toilet by the door, sink. Again, huge hull windows, ventilation hatch, and a separate shower stall. Let's go over to the starboard side. Now this has got the uh, two cabin layout here for guests or family. So you've got a double that's actually, you can see, laid out transversely here, making the most of the boat's width where it's not the longest catamaran, only 37 foot. That's a good use of space. Again, there's a bit of stowage behind the door here and storage down in that locker there. Loads of headroom. I'll show you that in a second. Heads compartment, again, with a separate shower stall. And heads aft there. And slightly narrower double in the forward end of the port hull. So with the same arrangement of windows. And lots of stowage. Headspace is good. I'm just over six foot, so you've got about six foot three, something like that, six foot four headspace here. One, 190, something like that. All right, let's go up and have a look on deck. One of the big appeals of this boat is the helming position, and we had a little look on starboard side. But just to reiterate, I've put the uh, seats down now, so you've got two really comfortable seats here for helm and somebody to sit next to them. I've got a really good view forwards at deck level. I can see the main up here, but I'm also completely involved with what's going on in the cockpit. I've got almost complete uh, view forwards. There's a little bit uh, just here on the left-hand side where they are, the supports get in the way, but actually I can see forwards 
better than I probably could on a monohull with a jib in the way. Uh, and it's a really engaged, involved feeling. I mean, I'm not sailing it, but the helm feels reasonably light and direct. And I'm close to the water, and that's, uh, I've just met the owners who've uh, taken delivery of their boat today. Oh, this is the first time they've been on board it since they ordered it. And they're going to be heading down across Biscay and uh, turning left and exploring the Med for a year or two. Um, and they're just really excited about it. But one of the things they like is that it, you're, you can hear the water gurgling away at the stern and you feel like you are properly sailing. You're not three stories up. Um, that also brings the boom a bit lower, so you improve the sailing characteristics of a boat. So this is looking forward from the helm station. And then I can come up these steps here. One, two, three, four. Now, they don't have handholds all the way along here, which is a little bit of a shame. Got one handhold there, one further forwards, but you can sort of go between shrouds, handholds, Okay, and you come up onto this huge foredeck here. So we've got hatches for all of the cabins. That's the uh, forward berth there. Oh, you've got the trampoline here, which is nice for walking on. And this is some of the huge appeal of a catamaran. It's just this deck space for being in the sunshine and lounging around. Um, the bowsprit here is removable. So that can come off when you're not flying a code sail or if you're having to squeeze into a marina berth. Furling head sail. Anchor comes aft from the forward beam to the anchor locker. Electric windowless just in front of the mast here. That brings the weight aft and into the main superstructure of the boat. And then what for cat is a reasonably low and sleek coach roof. You see all the lines led aft to the cockpit, so you don't really need to come up on the bow once everything's set. Let's lift that cushion off there. Um, securing points for the cushion, so you don't lose them overboard if you're sailing. There you go. And this is your chain locker. You can see we've got spare sails in there, off-wind sails, water tanks, and loads of space for extra clobber. And you've got an even larger one on port side there. One of the advantages of having a lower boom is you can actually get to the sail without having to climb up. I'm at deck level here. I can get to the tack of the main. There are some steps to climb up so you can reach the head of the sail as you're dropping it to pull it down. But that all goes into the stack pack there. And there's the rig. So the XL hull shape, they've gone for reasonable amounts of volume. Obviously this is only a 37 foot boat. You've probably got a similar amount of accommodation to a 50 foot monohull. So they're not small hulls, they're not uh, a proper uh, all out performance cat. Uh, but they are a little bit deeper than uh, some of the uh, really high, high volume catamarans. You've got a draft of three foot nine inches, so 1.15 meters. So that's enough to help with upwind performance. Um, I mean, it's going to be moderate if you're a monohull sailor, uh, not quite as good as you're used to there. But for a cat, that's pretty good going, and it'll help drive upwind while still being shallow enough to get into some nice little anchorages. And then we're going to come down here on port side, back down these steps, good handholds in the cockpit. and back inside the boat. Now, I've always sailed monohulls, uh, but the new owner of this boat is actually a monohull sailor as well. He currently owns a J-boat for racing and fast cruising. Uh, but that's what this boat is really designed to appeal to. Monohull sailors who enjoy a reasonable amount of performance and sailing engagement, but they just want the accommodation space, the stability, and the cruising comfort that you get from two hulls. And sitting here on a nice sunny day on the sun pads, I can definitely see the appeal. When it comes to cost, obviously catamarans tend to be reasonably expensive. However, this boat is sensibly priced uh, in comparison to some of the other monohulls on the market. If you were to compare this to maybe a 40, 45, 50 foot monohull, um, then it's pretty much on a par. 
the base price for this, excluding VAT, is £328,000. Uh, in US dollars, that's about 372000 Now, when you add in all of the optional extras, as this boat has, it's a fairly good spec. Uh, and cruising ready, ready to sail off. Um, including VAT, you're looking more like £478,000. And in dollars, that's $542,000. Um, so she's not cheap, but she offers a huge amount uh, and I think her owners are going to have some great adventures in the next couple of years.